Hey everybody, Andrew Zimmern here. Spilled milk, ask me anything special at home edition. I'm back from a five city and six or seven day trip. It was a lot of fun. Did a lot of cool things, attended a lot of galas. Uh, thank you to Gen Youth for the leadership uh, award. Um, thrilled to get it, helping fight hunger amongst children, especially uh, working with young people is just a great, great, great thing. Anyway, um, a lot of cool stuff. Dinner with, uh, I mean, check out my Instagram. A lot of it's in my stories. Did a Hawaii relief dinner for the ongoing efforts to help the people in Maui out in Denver with Troy Guard and the team at Garden Grace. Um, it was a, it went to Edith's all month long at Edith's in Brooklyn, New York. You can buy... Uh, my borscht and my pastrami sandwich collab with them and a uh, portion of the proceeds go to SUS, Services for the Underserved, on whose board I sit, helping the neediest New Yorkers. Um, so lots of really cool stuff. Um, oh, and huge thanks to the uh, National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences for nominating uh, Family Dinner uh, for a Daytime Emmy. We are thrilled and uh, they've rescheduled it. And magically, um, it is coming up in a month in Los Angeles. So I'm excited. It's gonna be really, really, really fun uh, to attend the Emmys. And fingers crossed, our team deserves it. I can say that. Not any more than anyone else's team. The other nominees are all great, but you know, I'm not gonna lie, everyone's competitive and everybody lies. They say, oh, it's just an honor to be nominated. That's true, but they leave out the second part of it, which is once nominated, everybody wants to win. Who doesn't wanna win? I mean, would you rather lose? Uh, all right, on to everyone's questions. Uh, Nikki writes, a purely logistical organizational skills question, how to keep track of the hotel room number you're in. Um, I don't, I write it down everywhere. I put it in my phone. Um, I will tell you, I mean, I legitimately was in five or five cities over the last seven days. And uh, sadly, two of the hotels back to back, I was on the seventh floor. I was in 707 and 717, got that all confused. Uh, then I was in New York, I was in 1507. Um, I mean, just to, I mean, you talk about wandering around, wondering where the fuck you are. Uh, that's me in hotels. However, the more interesting thing is that I legitimately, especially on trips like that, where you're just in new city, you know, every day, um, I wake up sometimes in the morning and I know this sounds nuts. If there's blackout curtains and I, it's really dark and I'm really get a good night's sleep, I wake up and I don't know what city I'm in. If, if if the curtains aren't blackout and gentle sunlight comes in and I wake up slowly, I remember where I am. But I woke up really hard in Denver the other morning and I was like, where the hell am I? Um, it was funny. Uh, Charlie writes, what's my favorite way of cooking calves tongue? Well, there's only two ways that I cook it and that is to uh, braise it, uh, peel it and slice it cold or sear it. Um, if I slice it cold, I serve it with tomato sauce. If I sear it, I put it on a bun with uh, sauerkraut or sweet and sour red cabbage and lots of mustard. Um, it's fantastic as a sandwich. It's, it tastes like the best pot roast you've ever eaten. Um, my grandmother would braise it, uh, then brown it in a roasting pan and pile it in with you know onions and carrots and all the rest of that and make a sweet and sour uh, sauce that went over it uh, with vinegar and sugar. I was just like, oh my God, raisins and port wine. It is so delicious. It's wonderful. We actually serve tongue in Denver uh, on our uh, menu for the fundraiser for Maui. Um, Out of the Closet Customs writes, how does one let meat rest and still maintain its warmth uh, really easily? Uh, let's say you take a turkey uh, out of the oven. I'm just, or a, a standing rib roast. I'm just thinking of big things that weigh over 10 pounds. 
Um, just gently tent with aluminum foil so you don't build up steam. Let it rest for 20, 30 minutes. It'll still be just as hot in the middle as it was when you took it out, almost. Well, turkey, especially if it's stuffed, it will. Uh, that stuffing in the middle just keeps steaming and keeping the bird hot. Um, but even hamburgers, I just tent them with a piece of aluminum foil and I only will tent a hamburger for like, you know, 90 seconds, but I don't serve it right away. I want those juices to return to the middle of it. Uh, pork chops uh, on a plate. And by the way, I'll preheat my oven to 200 degrees and put a platter or plates into the oven so that when I'm letting them rest, they're on a warm plate and they're not losing heat. Makes sense, right? Uh, Pen writes, what foods do you like to cook sous vide? Wow, gosh, uh, just about anything. Um, the Here's the great thing about sous vide. I can cook a steak or 20 of them perfectly to the exact temperature that I want within a degree. Pull it out, plunge that meat into ice water, drop the temperature right away so I don't have any food spoilage issues and put them in the fridge. And then I can just take them out all week long and just let them come to room temperature and then brown them and they're beautiful and wall to wall, whatever temperature I want. You want it medium rare, it's gonna be wall to wall, medium rare or medium, wall to wall, medium. Um, fish is really easy to chicken. And the great thing about sous vide is I can marinate under pressure as well and push that marinade inside the meat. So if I take um, 20 chicken thighs and put them in two plastic bags, 10 thighs each, lay them flat, uh, garlic and ginger and aromatics and wine, let's say just quarter cup, half cup, you save a lot of ingredients uh, when you marinate, uh, when you put it into a plastic bag and suck the air out of it. And it pushes that marinade into the meat. So you only have to marinate something for a couple hours. It's as, it's as if you've marinated it for a few days. Uh, then you cook it sous vide, uh, let it cool overnight, let's say. Then you take that chicken out and all of that whiny vegetable, garlic, yummy aromatic flavor is all in the bird. So whether you brine it or whether you dredge it and deep fry it, whatever you do to that bird, those juices, that flavor is inside that meat. It's absolutely the, the best thing in the world. Super convenient, almost eliminates waste uh, entirely. Um, and I love that it's, I just love that how, how convenient it is, right? It's wonderful. And it, it used to be expensive. Now it's inexpensive. You can get a great uh, uh, immersion circulator for 150 bucks. Just, you know, go to Anova, A-N-O-V-A, great company. They may, I mean, you can go anywhere. Go to williamsonova.com. They've got three or four different immersion circulators. They're probably on sale right now as they get ready for Black Friday. Um, you can even make pasta sauce sous vide. Uh, AndrewZimmer.com has a lot of great recipes. Can you tell I'm tired? It's been a long week, right? Uh, Jessica writes, what tapas do you always order to gauge how good a Spanish restaurant is? Well, not all Spanish restaurants serve tapas. Uh, so let's just get that cliche out of the way. Um, but if I go to a bar that specializes in tapas, and there are many that I love, um, there are a lot of different things that uh, I order, you know, <sighs> Snails in a good tapas bar, especially in uh, Spain, uh, there are some, I mean, there's one bar called El Caracol, the snail, that just has snails two or three different ways, but they make one in a whiny tomato sauce that I just absolutely love. Um, but I look for creativity uh, with tapas. So typical tapas, uh, manchego cheese, jamón, uh, of all different kinds. Um, uh, bucarones, uh, you know, peppers, all roasted pepper, all kinds of things. Wonderful, great. But I want to see people get really, really creative with, you know, fish salads and roasted artichokes and snail dishes and things and wonderful miniature portions of things. One of my favorite uh, tapa in the entire world uh, are little crispy pieces of uh, pig cheek and face and skin that you get in some that really love to work a lot with uh, with pigs. So I love it. Now, 
uh, when I'm at home, what is the one sort of hors d'oeuvre type of thing that I make the most? I take whole roast, I take whole red peppers, throw them into the fireplace now that it's winter time when there's a bed of coals down there, char the outsides, wipe that uh, black skin off them. Don't put them under running water. You don't want to wash away all that roasted flavor. Gently pull them apart, take away the seeds and the stem, and then I will take uh, strips, nice strips of freshly roasted red pepper, drizzle them with uh, Calabrian chili oil, just to give them a little heat, sprinkle them with parsley, paper thin slice of lemon on it, and a salted anchovy, salt cured, not vinegar cured, bucarone. Uh, probably one of my favorite tapa in the whole world to make at home, love it. During your last online discussion, Mike writes about Thanksgiving side dishes. You mentioned a green bean casserole with toasted, they were fried shallot rings. It also had your version of cream of mushroom sauce. Yes, I've, he had, anyway, uh, he wants to try my recipe but can't locate it on the website. Um, yes, my bad, it is not on the website. Uh, it, it's really a technique. So I steam my green beans, set them aside, dry them, put them in the bottom of a roasting pan or lasagna pan, right? Uh, then saute uh, a couple of pounds of sliced mushrooms with shallots and rosemary uh, and thyme and garlic when they're nice and browned. Uh, hit it with a tablespoon or two of butter and a tablespoon of flour and let that cook for a middle in the middle. Pull it all together, add a cup, cup and a half of milk gently bring it to a simmer and it will thicken. It will create a bechamel around those uh, mushrooms. So it will, will thicken into what looks like condensed cream of mushroom soup, but 2000 times better because it's homemade. Uh, and then let that cool and put that on top of the green beans. Um, and then, you know, you can sprinkle some, some cheese or breadcrumbs or whatever and bake it in the oven. So you've got that sort of casserole thing going. And then I will take shallot rings and I will deep fry them. You can dredge them in flour or you can just fry them raw first. If you do them raw, do them first at 300, then at 375. Uh, so they get nice and crispy. Dredge in flour, I do the, the, the milk and flour, typical onion ring thing, but do it with shallots and uh, make a big pile of them and sprinkle that on top. I don't think there's a better Thanksgiving side dish. It's yummy, very autumnal. Callie writes, which upper Midwest delicacies deserve to be known worldwide? Well, I just wrote a little bit uh, about this, I think, uh, last week. There are a lot of meat stores up here, old world Midwestern meat stores uh, that do incredible, you know, apple sausages and, you know, smoked jowl bacon and things like that, that I absolutely uh, adore. Uh, and that sort of, you know, old time, you know, Midwestern uh, butcher shop vibe, uh, you know, came from the immigrants, uh, Eastern Europeans of all types, Italians, French, everyone who came uh, out here in the 19th century uh, that knew how to cure meat had a hand in creating that tradition for us. Um, and it's probably my favorite. And uh, I posted a picture of some stuff from uh, Louis up in uh, Wisconsin, a pork store that I go to all the time to, well, I should say all the time, twice a year I make a, a run there and stock up and put everything into the freezer. Um, but that's really great. And the other, I think probably more importantly because I never tried it when I was in New York because it's not part of our culture there. Never had the opportunity to even see one. Um, are casseroles and hot dishes. Um, and I do have my uh, tuna noodle casserole and my uh, tater tot hot dish recipe on my website, both of them. Um, and I make those all the time. They're fantastic. I love hot dish and casserole. It's a great, especially now that the weather has turned uh, chilly. Um, <coughs> the dog sneezed and so do I. See him over there? Uh, Ella writes, I'll just go ahead and say it. I love a grilled cheese made with American cheese alongside tomato soup, as do I. Love it. Just had one the other day, in fact. 
Uh, but lately I've wanted to experiment with a slightly elevated grilled cheese. What do you recommend? Oh my gosh. Um, you have to choose cheeses that have melt points. I love uh, combining two different things. Sometimes a soft cheese that doesn't have any age on it, like uh, Chev, a spreadable goat cheese. Just spread it on the inside of something, then put a few slices of, uh, you know, Swiss or Emmentaler or Appenzeller, and you get that dichotomy of flavor. Um, there is a cheese that is a cheddar layered with Stilton, and it's called Huntsman. And whenever I buy it at the cheese store, uh, it's a remarkable cheese. I love it. You get the best of two worlds. But I, I actually will have them take the wire cutter and slice me a couple of thin, shh, slice a couple of thin, the dog's going crazy, there's deer outside. And uh, I'll do uh, Huntsman on it and then serve that with tomato jam and Worcestershire sauce. Um, Kayla writes, are there countries that have food that surprises you in new ways every time you visit? Yes, all, every single one of them, because you just keep discovering more and more and more and more. Shafiq writes, in your superb shrimp burger video, you used cooking wine in a white squared off bottle. Who makes it and can you help me get some? It's sake from a company that sadly is no longer in business, but any good high quality sake will do. See you next time on Spilled Milk.